All right. Tisha, come on up here. Amber, come on. Eddie, come on. Deborah, come on. Come on up here. Yeah, come on. Franklin and Faith. Crystal, you can't because you're on injured reserve. So I need Franklin and Crystal up here. How many we got now? Eight, nine. All right, I need one more. Where? Oh, don't. Come on. Come on. Run. Come on. Come on. Rachel. Let's get it for Rachel. Okay. All right, so um, I need five in a line on this side, just the way you are, and then I need five in a line facing the other way and facing each other. There we go. Yeah. All right, beautiful. All right, it's a really, I'm going to give these folks a very simple task. They, I'm not too sure about <laughs> these people that I have voluntold to do this. I want you to scrunch in a little bit shoulder to shoulder. And I want you to point two fingers at each other. Just like one, one th like, just like this right here. Faith. Yep, there we go. We All right, use your index finger. And point at each other. Keep your thumb down. All right. I want it all even. All even across. Okay. And now you're going to move this one over and into the middle. There it is. Okay. Everybody got it? Beautiful. All right. Here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to lay this across your hands. And I only have one task for you. I'm going to lay this across your fingers. And you have to keep every finger in contact with this piece of trim. And then I want you to lower it to the floor. And that's it. Don't hook it with your thumb. Just let it rest across your fingers. Okay? I'm going to come behind you. I'm going <laughs> to... We're going to rest this across your fingers. Okay? Uh, I need everybody to keep contact with it. Everybody got contact with it. Don't cheat. Don't cheat. Keep contact. On the count of, th on the count of three, I'm going to have you lower it to the ground. Okay? No hooking it. Everybody, 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 fingers in contact with the trim. On the count of three, lower it to the ground. Ready, go. Lower it to, <laughs> lower it. What are you doing? I, what is happening? Wait, 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 wait. Did you guys see that? Did, was I clear? What did I tell them to do? Apparently not. All right, let's try it again. Holy smokes. Let's try it again. Keep contact with the wood, the trim. I keep hitting Franklin in the face. Uh, and you're going to... Do, all right. Tisha, what are we telling people to do? Lower it to the ground. On the count of three, lower it to the ground. Ready? One, two, three. Lower it. Keep contact. What is happening? Oh, my goodness gracious. You guys are hopeless. Sit down. You guys are hopeless. Sit down. Get out of here. Clear out. Get out of here. Get out of here. What is that? Amber said it's the boys. Okay, that's cool. What in the world is the matter with you people? How did that feel? Huh? Impossible. In fact, you didn't just leave it steady. You guys went the opposite direction. Did you not? Huh? He said they were special. Well, they are special. They're all special people to Jesus, right? We are on step two, the power of humility. If I had you guys do that exercise 5,000 times, you would fail it 5,000 times. You cannot do it. You can't. Anybody know why? Probably you science geeks, you eggheads. Franklin <coughs> uh, probably has some idea. <laughs> it's impossible for you guys to do that. It has to do with threshold. There's a threshold of contact that you reach that you literally cannot keep yourself from, from lifting it because you're trying to keep contact with that thing, you know. So... 
Oh, wow. A little science lesson. Tish is like, <laughs> it's amazing. Here's what I want. I didn't want to do it because I'm not even sure if I, I had so many people on stage. I'm not even sure if I did this, it would have worked. But the only way that I can make it work is if I would have grabbed it by my hand and pushed down as hard as I could. But it probably would have broke it. Huh? Might have needed a couple of us to kind of push down against your force that's going up. What I, what I want you guys to see that there is a limit to what you are able to do. And it's a reality. And there are some of you, it was hard to get you off the stage because I think there's some of you who would have kept trying. You would have just kept trying to figure it out. You would have just said, there's got to be a way. I could, I could have told you, like, there's, I'm, guys, really, it's impossible. You said, no, we're going to figure this out. And you would have had a plan, and you would have gotten together, and you would have gone, okay, well, let's try this way. Let's try this way. But if you keep contact with that piece of trim, and you don't hook it, you can't do it. Some of you are still going, just let me have one more try. I know I can beat science. I don't know. The only way to do it is to have a power greater than yourself. Get into that mix and push it down. There's only one way that you can defeat addiction and defeat depression, defeat your anxiety, defeat your relationship issues. And even if you try as hard as you can, it's impossible to do that without a power greater than yourself. And I want you to just wrap your heart and your head around that it's just not possible. Even if you try really hard, because some of you are sitting in this room and you go, the reason why I can't quite figure out how to get my life together is because I'm not trying hard enough. Anybody still feel that way? I'm just not trying hard enough. Anybody? Just one of you. Okay, cool. Well, maybe the rest of you can go home. Okay. And that is the risk of, um, of recovery is in our minds, we, we, we kind of connect to this thing, but the risk of recovery is I'm going to go ahead and let go and let God, and the thing won't work. And so it's a terrifying, scary thing to let go of control and allow God to do what only he can do because we, all of us, really do believe that we're accomplishing something <laughs> without God. And I just, I want to hammer this point today in our uh, Wednesday lunch meeting is your best efforts are garbage. Not because you're a bad person. Not because you're, you're, um, you're, you're weaker than other folks. It's because with God, all things are possible. But with man, it's not possible. And I just, it's that black and white. Can everybody get on board in your mind that that's true? Now, there's some things, you, you know, we can do, and we do show up for work, and we go to our meetings and, and all that kind of stuff, but what I want you guys to really understand is, is that without faith, it's impossible to please God, and in that pleasing of God, in that obedience to His kingdom and His way, truth, and life, you can receive what you are here to receive and that's not a fixed marriage and that's not sobriety and that's you know not uh, a, a release of the symptoms of anxiety and depression because even if that happens i'm pretty sure you won't be happy i don't think that those things those external things truly bring joy and peace what you guys want is peace that passes all understanding you want to have a connection with truth that gets you to a place where no matter what comes at you, no matter what happens externally, no matter if you feel the weight of depression or anxiety or if a relationship falls apart or if some, someone in your life uh, uh, passes away or, or, or you lose your job, the rug gets pulled out from under you, nothing can touch the peace that you have internally. That's what we truly all are looking for. We're all looking for Pascal, Blaise Pascal, brilliant mathematician. He says, everybody just wants to be happy. That's all we're all searching for. The person who's, who killed himself to the person who is chasing the millions of dollars. Everybody just is trying to figure out how to be happy and to have peace. Do you guys agree with that? 
And I'm here to tell you, black and white, you cannot get that without Jesus Christ. I'm just here to tell you, it's gonna, you're going to try to go down and it's going to go up. You're going to try to go this way and you're going to go that way. Romans 7, the things I want to do, I can't do. And so the only recourse for us, the thing I want to hammer, is that you can't do this without Jesus, and therefore Jesus needs to be your teacher. And I've been talking about this on Sunday during our uh, discipleship, uh, our discipleship meeting, our discipleship uh, class that we've been doing, is that we have to allow Jesus to be our teacher. And if we can't do that, then we're not going to get to that place of peace because we won't know how and we won't have the power to carry out what he is trying to tell us to do. And I want to talk about this thing called authority. When a kid, usually uh, I worked at a, an alternative school for uh, a couple of years, alternative school where a school district would hire our school, they would use dollars, we were a private company, we were a private school, they would hire us to take on the kids that just could not be managed within their school system. Not kids who had like, you know, uh, Down syndrome or kids who had, you know, uh, like major special needs, but these were, these were mainly emotionally disturbed teenagers. These were kids, some of them did have like Asperger's and autism, but these are kids with specifically behavior problems. And a lot of times the teachers um, would experience these kids having a problem with authority. Anybody been around somebody who has a problem <laughs> with authority? Major behavioral issues happen when people have a problem with authority. But Jeremy and I were just talking about our culture. And I think America itself, the American culture, celebrates people who push against authority, right? The rebels, James Deans, right? The people who push against the norms and the status quo and against authority. And it's really how America was formed, right? The authority that was Great Britain. We were like, heck with this. We don't want to pay our taxes. So we had it, man. We, 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 are, um, we are a rebellious nation and proud of it, right? We don't, we don't conform to all that garbage. But I do want you guys to see in this step that if you have a problem with authority, you're going to probably have a, a problem with God. That we've got to get aligned with the, how the Bible tells us that we need to be submitted to authority, or we're going to have a huge problem with being able to receive the peace that God wants to give us. I'm going to give you a quote from Richard Foster and this is one of those books that I recommend all the time that is a wonderful supplement to recovery. And it's Richard Foster's Celebration of Discipline. It needs to be in your library. You need to read it probably once a year. It is really a, a great resource for especially a new Christian to receive these initial spiritual disciplines that sometimes we as the church don't do such a good job of teaching. It's Celebration of Discipline by Richard Foster. And he says this about this word submission. And, and by the way, I know submission has been taught poorly in the church, not this church, but in the church at large. A lot of times that word submission has been used to, to abuse women and marriages and things like that. Uh, but there is, a, there is a power in godly submission. And I want to read what, what Richard Foster says about the discipline, the spiritual discipline of submission. He said, submission is the spiritual discipline that frees us from the everlasting burden of always needing to get our own way. Isn't that a good quote? Submission frees us from the everlasting burden of always needing to get our own way. Isn't that true? <laughs> it's a burden to always have to get our own way. I was watching King of Queens the other night. I Don't judge me if you think that's believers should be watching that stuff, but it's a good old sitcom. With Anybody watch King of Queens? It was so fantastic. And uh, Carrie and Doug are arguing, and Carrie is like, you always have to have the last word. And he's like, no, I don't. And they argue, and at the end he goes, 
yeah, that's what I said. You know, he doesn't, and she just keeps calling on, and he can't stop having the last word. Anybody need to have the last word in an argument? Yeah. We, all of us, to some extent, struggle with people exerting their power over us, and there are reasons for that, right? It's, it's not hard to submit to God. It's hard to, s- to submit to anybody. Any authority can make some of us feel, some of you struggle with authority because it makes you feel triggered because you've been abused by authority. Some of you, when you have authority come at you, you you get angry because you still have a little bit of that rebel inside of you. Nobody tells me what to do, right? Which is pride. Some of you, When authority pushes on you, you have legitimate fear. Because it wasn't just the abuse of authority. Maybe you were physically, sexually, emotionally abused by authority or neglected by people who should have protected you. Some of you, when you are pushed by authority, you go passive. You just lay down. Because you just want to make peace. You're not a fighter, you're a lover. (laughs) A lot of passive people out here, and authority pushes on you, you're like, hey, 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 can't we all just be friends? You want to put the flower in the end of the rifle, right? Hey. Some of you get offended by authority because you don't want anybody to be in charge but you. You can't be led because you think you should be the leader of everything. There's some of us, I remember when I went to um, the eating disorder uh, treatment facility uh, that Janine went to, this rehab, and I was just going to chill out and sit back on these trust exercises, these big team exercises that all these uh, family members were doing. And they would start these exercises, and I'd be hanging back, and I would watch them, and I'd go, these people are idiots. And so I couldn't stop myself. What did I do? I'd, st- I'd start moving in there and go, hey, maybe if we tried this thing. And next thing you know, I'm like the group leader because I have to be in charge. And I'm like, when there's a leadership vacuum, I'm going to fill it. But those of us who struggle with authority, there's always a leadership vacuum because I can always do it better than you could do it. Anybody relate to that? Okay, again, you're a bunch of liars. Okay. <laughs> so... And then some of us are competitive, and so authority is difficult when we're competitive. There's all kinds of things that happen when we are tripped up by authority. But I want you guys to hear this. Um, and, and Mark, so you go ahead and put that uh, step slide up. I know I've been, oh, he's at it right this whole time. See, look at this guy. We came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Philippians 4.13 says, For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Let's keep it right there, okay? A lot of recovery folks who are Christians really struggle with the language that Bill Wilson used that said higher power. Because they're like, it's Jesus. Why are we calling it a higher power? I think it's actually genius what Bill Wilson did. And it's because he's saying, look, Some people who are just coming into recovery and don't know anything about God, they first have to understand that in order to receive recovery, you have to be willing to submit to something. You have to be willing to just shut up and understand that I don't care how many times you try to lower that piece of trim, you'll never do it. No matter how many times you say, I'm going to kick my habit this time, or look, I'll sit with folks who are addicts, and they will tell me how they should get clean. And I'm like, aren't you here because you screwed everything up by trying? Isn't that why you walked in here? Yeah, but I, here's the thing, man. I can't go to, to rehab, man. I just can't do it. I can't lose my job. I'm like, you're going to lose your job anyway. You, you've lost like six jobs. Yeah, my family, man. I can't do that to my family. What are you doing to your family right now? Like, they don't really want to let go. And it takes a power. I'm not God. But it takes them saying, okay, I'll listen to you, John. And Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. 
So just having somebody enter into, treat, into recovery and say, I don't know how to help myself deal with this depression. I don't know how to help myself deal with the fact that I'm offended by everybody. I don't know how to deal with the fact that I'm angry all the time. I'm ready to just say, show me, teach me. And of course, we've got to do that with safe folks. We have to do that with reliable sources. You can't just say that to anybody. That's, you know, people join gangs and cults and all that kind of stuff. It's to go into a safe place with people who are trustworthy and say, I don't know what I'm doing. And so I thought what Bill Wilson did was brilliant, especially when dealing with addicts, because he says addicts are above all things selfish. And we, uh, to some extent, we're all sort of selfish. And we all want what we want. And to be able to submit to an authority is the first step towards humility. And so our core question, the thing I really want to hammer on today is what makes it difficult for you to submit to a higher power? Why is it hard for you to submit to a higher power? Is it because you were hurt in the past by an authority that abused their authority? Is it, because, is it hard for you to submit to an authority because you have to always be in control? Is it hard for you to submit to an authority because you don't trust people? Is it hard for you to submit to authority because you're a rebel and you just have it in you to constantly push against the system? Is it hard for you to submit to authority because you've been abused in the past? Why is it hard for you specifically to submit to authority? But if you don't get this thing called humility and, and get to a place where you can submit to a higher power greater than yourself, you will never receive the peace that Jesus wants to give you because you're just holding on to your own way and your own truth and your own life. And so I'm going to read a story to you that's difficult, and I'm, 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 it, would, it would take a few, like, it would be a sermon series to get into some of the whys of, uh, you know, why does God do this kind of stuff in the Old Testament where you see him just wiping out an entire people? I, I get that that's a hard thing to swallow, but, uh, you know, read some commentary and pray over this thing. But I want you to get a concept here in, in Samuel that is introduced to us uh, around this idea of submission and, and, and how obedience ties right into that. And I'm going to read to you from uh, 1 Samuel chapter 15. And, and I'm going to bypass kind of the, the beginning of this story um, and just give you a real quick uh, summation of it. And, and God basically tells Saul, who's the king of the Jews at that time. He says, listen, I want you to go and I want you to destroy this whole people that have been causing all kinds of problems. They're completely rebellious. They're doing some terrible, awful things. I want you to destroy the entire people. I want you to wipe them out, and I want you to wipe out every part of who they are. I don't want, I don't want a trace of them ever on the planet, including their livestock, including the animals. You remember the story, Jeremy? Yeah. So you, I want to kill everybody. And I know that's a hard thing to swallow, but I want you to get the concept around this, okay? And the Lord says to Samuel, in verse 10, after Samuel goes out and then he accomplishes this thing, he goes out and does what God asks him to do, and God comes back and he says, I'm sorry I ever made you king. You haven't been loyal to me, and you did not obey my command." And Samuel, who's the prophet, was so deeply moved when he heard this that he cried out to the Lord all night. Early the next morning, Samuel went to find Saul. Someone told him, hey, Saul, went to the town of Carmel to set up a monument to himself. Then he went on to Gilgal. Saul's making all kinds of bad choices here. Samuel finally finds him. Saul greets him cheerfully. He says, may the Lord bless you. He said, I've carried out the Lord's command. Saul is feeling good. He's done what God has asked him to do. He's feeling really good. He's feeling good about himself. He's built a monument to himself. He's feeling like, man, I got this stuff figured out. This whole time, he doesn't understand that God is like deeply angry with him and very, very displeased with his behavior. I hope you're going like, why? What happened? Samuel then says, what is all this bleeding of sheep? Bleating as in, Mah. you like that? I could, yeah. I'm not going to do goats and cattle. We're not going to do that. Remember that thing you played with when you were a kid that had the little arrow on it and you'd pull it? I should have brought that with me, right? What is all this noise of sheep and goats and the lowing of cattle I hear? Samuel demanded. What does that mean? 
He didn't kill the animals. Saul was not obedient. He did it his own way, but he thought he did it God's way. See that? He almost did everything, but he didn't do everything, and, he, and you'll see he did it for his own self-interest that he held back, yeah? He said, you know, I, di I, I did. I, I, it's true that the army spared the best of the sheep and the goats and the cattle. I mean, that just makes sense to me. You ever been there before? <laughs> You're like, God, I heard you say all this, but like I did this, I, I, I kind of kept this one thing back because like, Dude, crack is bad. I get that marijuana is illegal, so I got rid of all that stuff. What's the, what's that Coors Light in your fridge there? Oh, that's not really a drug. I mean, I'm, I'm not an alcoholic. Hmm, okay. Right? Yes, I, I, I absolutely went back and I apologized to my wife. I said, I am so sorry that you feel that way. Somebody's like, mm, I don't like that. <laughs> I'm so sorry that you were offended by something I said that I really didn't know that I was hurting you. And, by the way, remember what you said the other day? But, no, I'm sorry. Is that an apology? But I apologized. Why did you hold on to some of this stuff? What's all this noise? What is all this? I hear some sheep and some cows. Well, look, it's true. The army spared, you know, these sheep and these goats, the best of them, because, you know, why would we kill them? They're going to sacrifice them to, to, to God. How about that? I'm not sure that's what he was up to, but okay. We did it. We destroyed everything else, he says. Then Samuel says to Saul, stop. That's a word of authority. You could just, in my mind, I hear Saul just going, and then I did it, and, and Samuel goes, stop it, just shut up. Listen to me, he says. Stop, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to what God told me last night. Saul says, what did he tell you? Samuel says, you may think little of yourself. Are you not the leader of the tribes of Israel? That is some passive-aggressive language from Saul, by the way. The Lord has anointed you king of Israel, and the Lord sent you on a mission and told you, go and completely destroy sinners, Amalekites, until they're all dead. Why haven't you obeyed the Lord? Why did you rush for the plunder and do what was evil in the Lord's sight? Saul insisted, but I did obey God. Is this a man who is submitted to his authority? He's not, a, he's not submitted to Samuel, who is a prophet, who is an authority over the king. And he's certainly not submitted to God. Do you see? It's not just being submitted to God. He's not even submitted to the one who brought him into the kingdom in the first place. Pride has brought him to this place. I did obey him. I carried out the mission he gave me. I brought back the king. I destroyed everyone else. Uh-oh. What else did he do? He brought back the king. Hello. Then my troops brought the best of it. It just gets worse. The sheep and the goats and the cattle and the plunder uh, to sacrifice it to God. Now, here's the part I want you guys to get. This is you in me, okay? Just hold on to the scripture, maybe go back and highlight it. 1 Samuel 15, 22, Samuel replies, what is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and your sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Listen, he says. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And submission is better than than offering the fat of rams. This is shocking. This is the next verse that is shocking. He says, rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft. That's pretty sinful. 
Rebellion is as sinful as Satan worship. Stubbornness is as bad as worshiping idols. Stubbornness and rebellion. Does that feel evil? I kind of am proud of how stiff-necked I can be. But he says it's like witchcraft and like bowing down and worshiping an idol. I'd never do that. I'd never worship another god. When you're rebellious, you're worshiping yourself. It's idolatry. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you. Ooh, that is scary stuff. I want you to confront yourself. Just ask yourself, am I a stiff-necked, stubborn person? Can you just take a quick look? You know, if you like, all of, I was a criminal justice major, and all criminology was just turned all upside down on its head when they discovered that you could find DNA and trace it back to people, yeah? So you just take a little bit of skin or hair, and it tells everything about another person, right? Isn't that amazing? It, ca it carries a, a blueprint of, of a human, and in it's a, in a just a, something you can't even see with the human eye. It's incredible. And I think there's moments in life where we can kind of take a look at our character by looking at these little pieces of our life. And I just want to ask you, how do you do with the authorities that are over you in life? Romans 13, Paul says everyone must submit to the governing authorities. Here it comes. All authority comes from God. Those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. Anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. The authorities don't strike fear in people who are doing right. Would you like to live without fear of authorities? Then do what's right. Pay your taxes, he says. Oh, this doesn't feel like a recovery lesson. What are we doing here? You work for the government? This is Paul. For government workers need to be paid. They're serving God and what they do. I want to just take a little bit of pulse on you. When you are dealing with authorities, when a police officer pulls you over, when your boss tells you what to do, parent talks to you, when you're dealing with the President of the United States, do you have any respect? I don't have respect for him. Well, you better, because Romans 13 says you need to. How do we talk about the people who are in authority over us? And that's a symptom of our heart is how you do with authority. I just want you to evaluate this part of your life because it might be getting in the way of you having peace because you are not good at submitting. And in marriage, I read the Bible. I don't follow tradition. The Bible tells me, submit to one another I don't tell my wife, submit to me, I'm the head. <laughs> the Bible says, I'm, su I'm supposed to love my wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. If you're a husband and you use the word submission to abuse your wife, God have mercy on your soul. That's the bride of Christ. The way he treats the church is the way you should treat your spouse. The Bible speaks of Jesus saying, the Son of Man didn't even come to be served, but to serve. Submission, service, that's Christianity. There is a time to stand up. Paul talks about that too. But I think in our world today, we are a people who have a hard time submitting. And I'm just going to give you three quick things. Three quick warnings about authority, and then we're going to wrap this up. 
If you can't, number one, this is a warning about if you can't submit to authority, number one, you cannot submit to authority, then you cannot be taught by authority. You are unteachable and you will learn nothing. You will be stuck and you will never grow. You will not be teachable. I've been hammering this in the discipleship class. Are you teachable? Can anybody tell you anything? Or do you already know everything? I'm f almost 50 years old, and I know it's cliche, but I never in my life have understood how little I know. <laughs> At 18, I knew everything. 49, I'm like, I don't know nothing. But I want to. I want to grow. I've never wanted to grow so much as I do at 49 years old. I want, God, give me all you got. But I, I, I got to be teachable. If we can't submit to authority, we cannot learn. We can't be teachable. That's number one warning. Number two, if you can't submit to authority, you will lose the power of his authority. If you can't submit to authority, you won't be able to call on the authority of God to do what only He can do in your life. Do you want the authority of God? He did everything in the authority of God. And in Matthew 20, He wanted to give authority to His people, but He can't give you authority if you won't submit to authority. And this is the scariest part. Warning number three, if you can't submit to authority, you're going to lose your calling. That's what I read. You can't submit to authority. God will not be able to use you at all. You'll lose your purpose. You'll lose your ability to do anything for God. He can't use a stiff-necked people. You'll be left out of the promised land. Read it. Just do a word search on stiff-necked people and see where they end up. They end up outside of the kingdom. Because rebelliousness is like the sin of witchcraft. If you believe in a hell, if you believe in a heaven, and you believe in sin, rebelliousness sounds like about as bad as it gets when it comes to God's anger and frustration with his people. And I'd be very, very nervous, and I'm speaking to myself, if you're not good at submitting to authority. Step two, I believe there's a power greater than myself who can restore me to sanity. Believing in that power means submitting to that power. Does that make sense? Would you stand with me? Father, I know there's some people in this room who have struggled with authority because there's been some authority in their life they've allowed to have power in their life who have used and abused their authority. And that's tough. But I, want, I, I just pray they would feel and sense that they're in a safe place. They have the authority of Scripture that they've heard today, and your word is true and can be trusted. I believe, Lord, that there's some people in this room that this issue of rebelliousness is keeping them. This struggle with submission is keeping them from everything that you have for them. They still have kind of one foot on the dock and one foot on the boat. They trust themselves sometimes more than they trust you. They trust in their own knowledge more than they trust you. They trust in their, their own abilities more than they trust you. And I pray, God, you'd break that tonight, today. You'd, you'd just break that rebelliousness and you'd break that stiff neckedness. And you'd get them to a place right now where they're clay in your hands and they say, I can trust you. I submit to you. I just want to be a servant. I want to be humble in all my relationships. I want people to see that that man, when I told that guy to walk a mile, he said, I'll tell you what, I'll do two if you want or more because I love you. I'd love to spend some time with you. When, they, when I slapped them on the cheek, they turned the other cheek because they were not easily offended. They were able to just say, you know what, maybe you're going through something. 
they could just let go and let God. But that's what they would see in the Christians in front of them. They wouldn't see angry people who are raging against every politician and screaming at the TV and screaming at the mayor and, and screaming against this kind of person and that kind. But they're just love and they're humble and they just walk in peace. That's what you want. They walk in unity. But there's some people here today, they're just struggling, they're wrestling with letting go. And maybe they would admit today that they, they have some issues with authority. Maybe it's something that happened to them. And maybe it's something that they're working on. It's a, a bit of a sin issue. If they're honest, they got a rebel in them. And they want to just kill that old man and be branding and walk in that newness and that peace of letting go, not having to have their own way all the time. Control is an issue. You just let go. So every head bowed and every eye closed, you've been hurt by authority. Authority has abused you and caused you pain, and it's hard for you to trust. I wonder if you put your hand in the air and just say, that's me. I've been hurt by authority. Authority has caused me a lot of pain. People I should have been able to trust, yeah. If that's you, I want you to come right now to the altar and just say, God, I, I do trust you. It's hard, but I choose to trust you. I choose to trust you. You've been abused. You've been hurt. You've been had pain in your life. Those of you who are struggling right now and you say, God is convicting me of this issue I have. I've got some of this rebelliousness inside of me. And I don't want it in my life anymore. I want to be able to submit to God. Would you raise your hand and say, I want to do that. I want to kill any of that rebelliousness in me, that self-will. I want you to come to the altar and, and just say, I confess my sin. I want, to, I want to be free of this need to control everything and manage everything and just let go and be humble and receive. I'm, I've, I just haven't been very teachable. I want to be teachable. Would you admit that and come to the altar and just say, God, help me to be teachable. I want to be clay in your hands. You're the potter. I'm the clay. Mold me into whoever you want me to be. I just want to spend some time with God here at the altar. We just want to pray together and just say, God, I trust in you. I trust in you. Would you come? Let's pray together.